Second point, the mass in the life of the church. So the apostles lived with our Lord. John saw the whole passion. The apostles saw the agony. Then they saw the wounds later on. The, the apostle received the commandment from our Lord, you know, do this as a commemoration of me. So they went into the whole world and they preached. It was today's uh, introit, okay? Uh, and announced to the outermost part of the world, you know, the world has liberavit uh, dominus populum sum. Our Lord has redeemed, saved, freed his people. So go and preach that everywhere. And that was, that was the message of the apostles. You look at St. Peter on Pentecost Sunday. He says, he was the just. You know, you have crucified the author of life. But we are his witnesses. And he came back to life. So they, they preach the passion. St. Paul will say, I know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's it. Our faith is, is the passion. Our, our preaching is the passion. When the missionaries went everywhere, they made crosses when they did not know the language. They made crosses. We, uh, Jacques Cartier arriving in Gaspé back in 1534, if you recall, he planted a cross. He did not know the language of the Aborigines. He planted a cross, 30-foot cross, a huge cross. And he tried, he, the explorer, he tried to tell by sign language that God came down and they nailed on a cross. And through the cross, we have to go back up to heaven. That was the, mi the mission of true Catholic explorers. If you recall the mother, we will see that story in one of our next historical talks. The, the parents of Catri Ticacuita, little blessed Catri Ticacuita. She died at four years old, but she remembered that her parents, what did I say? She, she became an orphan at four years old. She lost both parents. But by four years old, her mother had already impressed in her that the true religion is the religion of the cross. And she would make cross on the trees. And little Katri would, would uh, weave together, you know, grass in the form of a cross, like they do the St. Bridget cross in Ireland. We have that as well. So the cross. The true religion is the religion of the cross. You get in a plane, and as the plane takes off, everybody keeps silence, and the th full throttle, you see somebody next to you making a sign of the cross. Oh, there's a Catholic. Oh, nice. The baseball players, they're going baseball, and they go, okay? They're Catholics. The sign of the cross is the sign of Catholicism. We're the only one making the sign of the cross in that way, okay? So that has been the teaching of the cross. Thinking of Archbishop Lefebvre as well is, is that, that message of the, the, the passion we need you know, to bring the message of the passion to our modern world that rejects the, our Lord and his passion, but we, bring, we need to bring it through the cross, through the mass, the sacrifice of the cross through the mass. Now, that's the first point of the mission of the church. It's not enough to believe in the cross. It's not enough to have faith in the cross. We need to do something. It was today's epistle. Don't be only the hearers of the word but the doers also. Faith without works is dead. 
We need to do something. It's too easy just to stay there and, and watch and say, well, Jesus died for us. Hallelujah, we're saved. You know, you must accept Jesus Christ in your life as your personal savior. That's it. You say yes, bye. That's it. You're saved forever. Unless you become a Catholic afterwards. Then the backtracking, well, you have never been saved in the first place. You know, that's really, that's what happened. Okay, so. But what does our Lord say? To Nicodemus. Okay. He says, unless you be born again of the water and the spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. You need to be born again of the water. And our Lord says, unless. So, we're going to have to receive baptism. Go into the whole world, teach the gospel to all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So there's going to have to be a baptism. And, and we know, if you have friends, and some of you perhaps, are converts, not Catholic, you read the Catholic uh, catechism, you hear the Catholic, you hear about the Catholic faith, and you know, you're kind of drawn to the Catholic faith. There's an act of surrender. There's an act of surrender. Like Saint Remy, Remigius, the Bishop of Reims in France in 496. Well, he told Clovis, the king of the, the Franks, he says, King, bow your head. Okay? And now, Adore what you have burnt, okay, and burn what you have adored so far, okay? And he baptized the king. But it's an act of humility to bow down the head and to be baptized. But we need that act of humility unless you're born again of the water and the spirit. But our Lord also said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And the Jews were shocked. And our Lord said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will not have life in you. Unless. So our Lord is obliging us to believe, to receive communion. If we cannot receive communion in reality, because there's no mass, there must be a desire of communion. And that, St. Thomas says, it's it's included in communion, in, in baptism. Baptism, especially uh, adult converts, when they're baptized, they just normally, they're dying to go to communion. When, once they understand what baptism is, what communion is, this is, oh, I can't wait to receive our Lord. That, that desire, that desire. Even... Uh, a famous convert of the 1980s, I think it was 80s or 70s or 80s, Scott Hahn. He wrote a number of books on uh, apologetics. Unfortunately, he turned charismatic at the end. But, but the story of his conversion is very, very beautiful. And that there's a one, one moment when he was a bit like St. Augustine, who was, St. Augustine was struggling between the requirement of the Catholic life, there were requirements of purity, of chastity, and Catholic life. Augustine had big problems. Scott Hahn, he was struggling with the Catholic belief in Our Lady and the Catholic belief in communion. You know, these, some of these, these uh, intellectual converts, they... They want to look at everything Catholic to, to be sure they're not going to make any wrong step. But, but nevertheless, inside their heart, they see the Catholics going to daily communion and give us this day our daily bread, and they see people going to communion. Says, That's really the meaning of these words of the Our Father. It's not just reading scripture. There's more than that. And our Lord says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood... Our Lord did not explain. He says, you must receive communion. It's been the practice of the church. So, so the church has said throughout the centuries, all over the world, the church has preached 
the gospel of the cross. The church has baptized nations and peoples of all tongues and nations. And the church has brought them to the communion rail, brought them to the mass. And when the missionary arrive in a village, uh, as, as Archbishop Lefebvre says, he himself lived it. We, we do it, our priests now in modern, modern days, when a little mass center starts, it's actually your situation right here in Ottawa, okay? We have a mass center, okay, we're baptized. We, what do we need, what do we lack is a church. Catholics need a church. Why? For Mass. Baptism is, a, is the door to the church. Spiritual, the spiritual door, but it's a door towards a greater union with our Lord in the Mass. So, missionaries con- baptizing people, the priest will say his Mass and say his Mass and, and build a little hut. It's going to be an igloo. It's going to be a, a coconut hut. It's going to be whatever but people want the mass. People want the mass. Remember the story of Chief Joseph over there in Montana, in uh, the Bitterroot Valley, just south of Missoula in Montana. We have a chapel over there. Our Lady of the Bitterroot. That's the name of the chapel. And uh, the story of Father De Smet. You may have read his life, Father De Smet. Great story. We have mass basically next to the, the mission that he, was, he founded in Our Our Lady of the Bitterroot, in St. Mary's of the Bitterroot. And uh, Chief Joseph baptizes the Indians. uh, Father Desmet baptizes the Indians. And and then he has to go. He says, Chief Joseph, I have to go. It was in the autumn. I have to leave before the snow comes. I'll be back in the spring. And he explained to them, every Sunday, you get together, you say the prayers, that I've taught you. And because they didn't have any books and they didn't know how to read, so he, how did we he teach them the prayers? Well, he take like 12 people and he break a prayer into 12 pieces. And each one would say a piece. And every Sunday, one after the other, they say the piece. They had to learn that one line of the Apostles' Creed or the Our Father, the Hail Mary. And so they only had to remember one little bit, but everybody a different bit. That's how they all learned their prayers. And so when Chief Joseph, when Father Desmet came back in the spring, he met uh, the chief. And so, Father, we're so glad you're back. Father, just like you people when you don't have mass for months. Father, 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 are we going to have mass? He said. And Father says, of course, of course. But that, that desire, you know, of, of Holy Communion. Then, of course, there was the, the famous story, you know, where Father Desmet said, uh, yes, Chief, but uh, can we have Mass, like, now? And Father said, well, you know, last Mass was six months ago. Don't you want to go to confession? You know? And Chief Joseph said, why? Well, I haven't been here for six months. And, of course, there's no... No internet in these days. This is 1840. And his father very paternally, motherly says, well, did you not have a little bit of dirt on your soul? A little lie, a little anger? Did you? And Chief Joseph says, Father, you told us when we are baptized, we are different people. Is there somebody who is baptized who still do these things? Father De Smet was crying. He says, I wish people in Paris and our big cities would hear that. These savages, they understood what baptism is all about. Anyway, Father said Mass, they were so eager to receive communion. So, so you see, the church preached, but the church gave the sacraments that unite to the passion. So St. Thomas Aquinas explains, in order to be saved, we must believe in our Lord Jesus Christ and 
We must do something to be united to his passion, and that is to receive the sacraments. Baptism, and sins after baptism, confession, and communion, we need it. We need, but the, why do we receive the sacraments? To be united to the passion of our Lord. And if you go back to the first point, to be united to his love, to his heart. Because it's not the suffering as such, it is the suffering as the sign of his love for us. The suffering as a sign of all the virtues. So we want the Mass to be united, uh, to be united to the passion. So, do you understand, okay? First point, what is the passion for our Lord? For the, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, for Almighty God, what is Calvary? What is the Mass for him? The sign of his love for us. God has loved the world so much as to give his only begotten son so that they who believe in him may not perish but have eternal life. So that's the, the purpose of the incarnation is the redemption. It's a redemptive incarnation. The church understood that. We have, and the church, the church sent, our Lord sent, and the church continued, the popes continued to send bishops all over the world go and preach the life of Christ and make people unite to him through the sacraments. Build chapels, say mass, bring people to the Holy Eucharist. Like Father Henry, the, one of the apostles of the Eskimos, said, when I, plant, when, I, when I arrive in a new village, I plant a cross. And when I say the first mass, and he said it in one of his letters, Say the first mass, and imagine a missionary in the North Pole on a block of ice. But there's a few Eskimos there, living there, hunting seals and fishing salmon, whatever. And Father says mass in an igloo. And he just, the priest, he raises the host for the first time, living, raising the chalice, tiny little missionary chalice. And the priest, just like this we have there, the priest says mass, and and the glory of God, the precious blood being shed and giving communion for the first time to the first baptized Eskimo of a tribe. Imagine the joy of a priest. The joy of thinking of if the priest can be so happy, how much God is happy when it happens. The first baptism, the first communion, and all these. Tribes. We were like this when the missionaries came here. They were convert or in France or in England when the missionaries came we're going to have in a couple of days Saint Augustine of Canterbury that was one of the first so they had to convert nations we were pagans and so conversion is to believe in our Lord and believe understand why he died unite ourselves to that intention to that love and imitate him 